What's up people, hope you're well. Today I just wanted to discuss teams that had the best and worst trade and free agency periods. One of the most intriguing teams in the offseason were the Port Adelaide Power. While the loss of some experienced players, Jared Pollock, Jasper Pittard and Chad Wingard Bruh. will hurt them in the short term, they got in a Hawthorne young key defender who looks set to become a 200 game player. His name is Ryan Burton. He was a major factor in the deal for Wingard. The front office has also managed to get themselves into a very nice position on the draft board come November. Port currently holds pick 6, pick 10 going into the national draft and it is believed that they are going to use these selections on a homegrown talent like Isaac Rankin. But they also could be interested in Connor Rosie and Jackson Haley. It's naive to think the power are done with making deals. They could still make a late charge up the draft board in November to take a player like Jack Lacocious. I'll be following the power's progress throughout the whole draft process. Looks to be unpredictable and exciting. The next team is the Mighty Hawks, arguably the most aggressive team this trade period. Their outgoing assets include Ryan Burton, who's gone to the power, and Taylor Duray, who is now at the Dogs. Incoming assets to the Hawks include Jack Scrimshaw, Tom Scully, and Chad Wingard. The Hawks continue to change. They seem to be in a talent acquisition phase. Over the past few seasons, they have pursued risky star players who have hampered by injury. These bargain type of deals have been a factor in the Hawks' tilt towards Premiership Cups over the last decade. I would assume the Hawks have supreme confidence in their medical department. Jager O'Meara looked like a bargain last year and time will tell how this turns out, but so far so good. I'm really hoping on the medical staff at Hawthorne to get Tom Scully fit and firing for the 2019 season. There's nothing better than seeing a star get back to their best with a fresh start and a healthy run. Another winner here is the North Melbourne Football Club. The players they brought in include Jared Pollock, Dom Tyson, Jasper Pittard, and Aaron Hall. Assuming everyone is healthy come round one, they have some experienced senior players who can squeeze into the midfield and half back line. They didn't give up much more than a first round pick and a couple of later round picks to get these players in. If two of these players pans out, this will be a huge success. By being this aggressive, North have shown they're serious about a run towards the Premiership. My prediction heading into next season is that North will start off slow with only a few wins to their name until round 10, as it will take some time for the new players to gel to the new system and naturally find roles within the team. Once they start winning, look out because I think they will build a lot of momentum heading into September. The last team here that did arguably well in the trade period was Fremantle. Sure, they lost one of their best midfielders in Lockie Neal, but if you take into account the player they got back with that same pick in Jesse Hogan, then that's a justified reason to be happy. Hogan has already shown what he can do at a young age. He managed to kick 47 goals from 20 games this season. Package this with the fact he isn't even in his prime years yet. It just makes the future so exciting. No doubt, he's their go-to forward for the next decade. With handy ball users like Fife, Mundy, Brayshaw and Chera delivering at inside 50, should give Hogan the perfect opportunity to kick 50 goals plus next season. That's a wrap guys. Be sure to like, share and subscribe for more AFL videos.